No, just a couple guys from Straight Air. Wait a minute. Look at that. That's a refueling area. Lock the breach of security regs. I'll go and sort them out. This incident is typical of the things that have been happening to this company recently. My rivals are deluding themselves if they really expect the public to believe their lies about our safety standards. For example, last night's fire was made to look like straight air employee negligence, but I'm convinced it was actually sabotage. It was sabotage, of course. Why is someone trying to bring down Mr. Straight? His airline is new, but it's growing fast. Straight air offers more. Personalised video screens for every passenger, specially shielded seats so you can use laptop computers. Yes, yeah, straight air is good value. It's popular and successful. Too successful for some. A cartel of the world's major airlines has decided that Straits Enterprise must be stopped. Are you serious? Big airlines ganging up to bring down the new boy? Of course. They'll do anything to stifle opposition. My organisation is very concerned. But Mr Bixon, I thought your committee for global economic equilibrium was simply an advisory body. Yeah, sorting out free trade agreements, making sure we get all that weird fruit in the supermarkets. The CGW is a little more proactive than that, but we prefer to work behind the scenes. People like to believe in the freedom of market forces. Our task is to maintain that freedom. The cartel's main agent, Hector Jerome. I thought there was no evidence of sabotage. And I suppose these tapes were just... Uh... Mislaid by airport security, yes? But if they prove straight right, That then... won't deter the cartel. We think they're planning something spectacular. To finish straight air for good. A bomb in the boardroom? Something more subtle, more involved. Jerome's showing great interest in something called a DCE machine. Really? It's invented by a company called Mindscope. Now look, whatever Jerome is plotting, it's vital for world trade that you keep straight air in business.
So, this place is all about teaching. Hmm. So what's the connection between an airline and educational technology? Can I help? I'm Selina Almond. I run the direct cerebral encoding program here. Instant knowledge. Sounds like magic. Not magic. Advanced science. Direct cerebral encoding is a way of rapidly implanting information into the brain. Directly into deep memory. Incredible. Sounds spooky. Why don't I give you a little demonstration? Go on, Beckett. Well, let's face it, eh? Your brain's probably full already. Comfy? Yeah, kind of tingles. We're sending a high vibration binary signal into your brain's hippocampus. Hippo what? It's where the memory's located. Exactly. We're sending information directly to your memory. We're loading you. <laughs> uh, what with exactly? Don't be alarmed, it's just a test pattern. You're reading the whole of this romantic novel. I prefer spy thrillers myself. If you'd like a more technical perspective, you could go and speak to my encoding assistant in the lab next door. I think I will. Is that it? I don't, don't feel any different. The central character, Miranda, detests her half-brother. Why? Because she believes that he swindled her out of an inheritance. Give me an example of how music is used to describe Miranda's feelings for her lover. Their fingers played a concerto over each other's bodies. Their hearts pounding a dense, exotic jungle rhythm. Page 38, paragraph 4, second sentence. This is amazing. I can see the words in my head. It's... Read an encyclopedia in 15 minutes, learn a language in half an hour, I'm impressed. Does this machine have any application in aviation? Aviation? Hmm. Specifically the passenger airline industry. We've hardly begun to exploit it commercially. We're only one step beyond the prototype. Ever heard of a Hector Jerome? Sorry. So, what about security? You know, it's not in my nature to meet such a beautiful woman and ignore her charms. Please, dine with me. Page eight, paragraph four, third sentence. Miranda meets Alphonse for the first time. <laughs> It's not such a bad idea, is it? State of the art automated security systems. Remote sensors on all external doors. What is that? An intruder. Why does anyone want to steal the DC machine? That's what we'll have to find out. You see, I'm probably the only person in the country that could operate it safely. In untrained hands, it could be extremely dangerous. Jerome got back a few minutes ago with some new guy. Anyone we know? Well... He's on Bixon's list of possible Jerome associates. Where is he? Here he is. Dieter Earhart, freelance fighter pilot. Looks like he's in for a session of speed learning. Question is, what are they teaching him? Just sit still. The process is payment. Time to... 
I've lost it, was it? I can't hear anything. That DC machine must be giving out some sort of jamming frequency. Well, looks like one of us is going to have to go in. Looks like Jerome's having trouble with that DCE machine. Okay, Ed. Try and find out what program he's encoding Earhart with. Nauseous. Is it supposed to? It may just be a side effect. I'm on the right floor. I don't need to distract Jerome somehow. I've got an idea. Jerome's loading into that guy. Kazbek. It's a language series. Welcome to Theatre Bookings Interactive. What the hell is this? Hope you like the opera, Mr. Jerome. Interactive. You requested 12 seats in the upper circle for next month's production of Don Giovanni. No, I didn't. How did you get this internet address? I've been cleverer than you are, stupid. Jerome, I don't think this thing is working properly. I'm disconnecting this. Twelve seats, upper circle. Don Juan, as requested. Don Juan? You said Don Giovanni before. Time to find out where you are. Make it is on to me. Ed, get out of there now.
Prisoner, stand. Another privilege for you, courtesy of the governor. How very kind. He says if you carry on like this, you may even be allowed a visitor in the cell. That will be nice. You may fool the boss, but you don't fool me. Then I shall have to try even harder, won't I? It's a foreign language program. He was trying to speed teach their pilot to read Kazbek. Kazbek? Mm, Kazbekistan's adjacent to Mongolia, part of the Eastern Alliance until the revolution. How will teaching a fighter pilot a foreign language help Jerome destroy straight air? With any luck, you'll be in a position to find out if Jerome's taken in by your biog. Well, he's hoping he takes the bait. Right, I'm into the cartel database. Have you finished your version of Earhart's record yet? History is rewritten. Earhart now flew all his most dangerous and dodgy missions with a friend. Me. <laughs> Ed, don't go crazy with your medals. You've given yourself far too many decorations. Well, you think that's a bit over the top? Just a bit. <laughs> we must find out what Jerome is planning. Straight is in Budapest. He's been summoned back to a big meeting at the Air Authority. Is he in some kind of trouble? Oh, quite the opposite. He's due to sign agreements for major new transglobal routes. It'll make straight air equal in size to the majors. The cartel is desperate to stop him. So whatever Jerome is planning is going to happen today. Straight is due back tonight, which gives you eight hours. Losing Earhart was a big setback for Jerome. He needs to replace him and fast. My team are making sure that Ed is his first choice. I'll just make sure your chap doesn't overdo the fiction. Don't want him going crazy with his medals. Hello? I understand you flew with Dieter Earhart. Maybe who wants to know? I need a pilot. Someone with a record like yours for a very special mission. Ross Beckett, I'm going in. I hope you guys have got sound and vision. Reading you loud and clear, Ed. As long as he stays within range of the booster transmitter on his bike, we shouldn't have any problems. Your service record with Erhardt's very impressive. It's odd he never mentioned your name. I don't talk about him much either. Right. Something I want to show you. Here, let me take you come. It's all right, you won't need it. I'm not going out. Come with me. Of course, for the picture to be any good, Ed's got to stay within reach of the camera. Flight simulator. Time to take a practical. Three bogeys, two to the front, one to the rear. Adopting type D attack patterns, classic combat scenario. I didn't know we'd have to counter-attack on this mission. We won't. I just want to see if you could have won those impressive decorations you claim. Vixen was worried Ed might go crazy with his medals. Was he? What's that?
It's a fighter aeroplane. That was close. Let's make it a bit more like life and death. Enhance it. Bad move. They've pinned you between them and the ground. Nice. It's more than nice, mate. I saved Dita's life once with that maneuver. <laughs> Bear. A dervish. Never heard of it. Looks like a radar invisible design. Vertical takeoff fighter. Based on design stolen from the West. Built in Kazakhstan. Hence the language connection. They want Ed to fly that plane, and they need the DCE machine to teach him the language. <laughs> Only thing is, they couldn't get it to work. <sighs> Selena. Oh, look, look. Her rear office, just tell her to stay put until I get there, OK? Beckett, did Bixen use that particular phrase about Ed, crazy with his medals? Yeah. Odd. That's exactly what I said to Ed here. Welcome on board. You're going to be a rich man when this is over. And what exactly is this mission? Boy, what on earth do you think you're doing? You can't just barge in here, you know. Beckett. I'm sorry, miss. He just ignored me. That's all right, Charlie. He's a friend. You are a friend, aren't you? Yes. And you have to come with me now. I may have agreed to dine with you, but I usually prefer a little more notice. You're in danger. Are you sure you're not overreacting? I would have settled for dinner, you know. Mr. Bixon, come in. I understand that Jerome has managed to get hold of a dervish. Really? Can't imagine where you heard that. You've been spying on us. Why? I had to know what you'd found out instantly. You could have just asked. Look, this is not the time for you to worry about your professional pride. The situation is getting out of hand. You do know what a dervish is. An Eastern Alliance copy of a radar invisible jet. It's more dangerous than that. They are fitted with stormburst missiles. <sighs> stormburst? But they're deadly Rottweilers of the air. Fuel air shells. They release a dense cloud of fuel vapor into the path of an oncoming aircraft. Which they ignite, destroying the target in an airborne fireball, I know. And what do you suppose Jerome wants with a storm burst? Of course. He wants Ed to fly that plane to shoot down a straight air passenger plane. Please do not make excuses. You can't imagine how angry I get when I hear excuses. No, there's not much time left. We we'll have to take direct action.
I want you to operate this remarkable machine of yours. Which you stole. Borrowed. That aircraft is a dervish. We need to fly it. Unfortunately, the flight computer instruments and command systems are all in the Kazbek language. I want your machine to teach us that language. Now. You can't just drag me here and expect me to help you. But I insist. No. We're not bluffing. Do it, Selena. No. Do it or they'll kill you. No. Mr. Jerome, I, uh, I don't, I don't think our friend has studied psychology, if you'd allow me. You wouldn't want your boyfriend to get hurt, would you? Excellent. I was right to trust you. What have you been doing? You've routed the digital encoder direct to the signal accelerator. You're lucky the whole thing didn't blow up in your face. Just do it. We haven't got much time. Fisk, you know your instructions. Reprogram the air positioning beacon. Get started. It's 20 miles away. Control confirms that the target has left on schedule. Good. Report back when you reach the beacon. My turn. Get suited up. Time. Think it's Selena are here. Are they okay? For now. Guess what? We've got a plane. Uh, yeah, a dervish. We saw it. Any idea what they're up to? I can guess. Fisk is going to reprogram an air positioning beacon. You know the things airliners use to navigate by. Can he do that? Yes, it's just an electronic signal. Listen, any idea where the beacon is? Jerome said it's about 20 miles from here. Do you think you can find it? <laughs> I'm sure I can. Listen, you stay with Jerome. You're probably in the best place to stop him. Yeah, but you've never used one of those in anger before. <laughs> I suppose when the timer reaches zero, this thing explodes? Won't come to that. So how long have we got? Well, about an hour. If you're going to do something clever, now would be a good time. Well, does it make sense? Has the encoding worked? Yeah. Yeah, I can read it all. The, uh, the instrumentation, the flight computer. Reprogram an air positioning beacon. 
I reckon he'll use the beacon to lure the target plane off course by sending out a phantom signal. Jerome wants the plane to crash, but for it to look like pilot error. Right. Which beacon is he heading for? There are two within range. One's marked North Valley 6, the other Skyway 2. I am at Air Contingency Command. According to the screens here, a straight air flight from Budapest will be locking onto North Valley 6 within minutes. Well, that must be the target plane. Oh, undoubtedly. Tyson Strait himself is on that plane. Mind if I spend some time up here with you? You're the boss, Mr. Strait. Big day for the airline. When I sign those new route agreements tonight, this company will really start going places. You ever fancied flying long haul, Jack? Ros. Air Contingency Command is sending up fighters. They'll blow Jerome out of the sky. Hey, wait a minute. Ed's flying that plane. OK, climb to 12,000 metres and follow the course I've given you. Gotcha. If you can stop that beacon being diverted, it might not be necessary. I can give you 30 minutes. signal has been altered, Mr. Jerome. Good. Estimate interception in seven minutes. I'm getting a new reading from Beacon North Valley 6. We're slightly off course. Adjust bearing to 295 degrees. No worries, sir. I'll have you home right on schedule for your big meeting. Target plane is changing course as planned. Bearing 295 degrees at 12,000 meters. These handcuffs, they're electronically operated, right? So? Well, we found the DCE machine emitted low-level RF interference. Yeah. We've got to deal with that problem before we can market it properly. Well, that problem might just help us get out of these things. Can you stand up? I think so. Want the bomb, yeah? Uh. Uh, okay. this over. <coughs> now what? See that trace on your radar? That's our target. Straight air flight 342. Which you're going to hit with the storm burst, yes? That's right. We're going to put a fireball in its path and make it crash. It seemed like one of its own fuel tanks exploded. What's more, the plane will be hopelessly off course. Everything will be blamed on fatal errors by straight air. Why? Why kill all those people? To destroy straight air. Not if I fire the storm burst off first. What do you mean? I can't let you do this. <laughs> you think I'm a fool? You can fly the plane, but I've disconnected your weapon systems. I control the missiles. Vixen. I'm at North Valley 6. Fisk is here. I'm going to try to reinstate the correct signal. The fighters are in the air. They'll authorize the attack in 10 minutes. Repeat, 10 minutes. So, look, I'm going to try something. You can bring your hands down. Right. Yeah. If I step over. How's that? Now your turn. You know, oh. Lift over. Oh. Okay. Now if we lift both arms over. 
Mr. Jerome, something's wrong. There's been a power surge. The beacon's going down. Just keep on course. Try to control it. Beacon North Valley 6 has disappeared completely. Ionospheric disturbance? Probably. Roz? Roz? They can't give you much longer. Program that beacon. Two minutes, that's all. Setting the signature tone now. Vixen, all I need from you is the coordinates. So you grab the handle. Okay. <clears throat> right, put it towards us. Affecting the bomb timer too. Turn it off. Yeah, I've got that now. Give me the directional information. M M zero zero degrees eighty north. Six zero degrees thirty east. That beacon back online yet? No, sir. We're still plotting our course from the last signal we received. I can trust you guys not to get us lost, eh?
Beacon North Valley 6 is back. And our bearing? We're way off course. Thank goodness that beacon came back online. Any further off course and we'd have really been in trouble. Plot a course correction, Paul. Sealed. There's only three minutes left on the timer. Think. Hang on, you said the DCE machine might explode if we rooted the digital encoder into the signal accelerator, yes? Probably if we disconnect the safety limiter. Right. Well, let's get it over to these doors. We'll use it to blow a hole in them. But if we turn the machine on, it will activate the bomb timer. That's a risk we're just going to have to take. Nixon. I've done it. The beacon is now sending out its original signal. Nixon, can you hear me? Vixen, don't let them launch those missiles against Ed. Vixen! Just fire the missile or I'll shoot! Now! You can't fly the plane alone! Just do it! Fire the missile! Okay, you insist. Oh, I should tell you. I've disabled the launch mechanism. Crazy, you'll destroy us. You did give the order to fire. Selena. I love to be in control. So, I say something in Kazbek then. What? Say something in Kazbek, the language. I can't. I was loaded with the ability to read it, not speak it. Oh. Sometimes the gifts of the gods are but cruel twists of fate, Ed. What? Love Finds a Way, chapter 19, page 360, paragraph 4. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, Beckett, come and have a look at this. According to the flight records, Air Contingency never scrambled any fighter to shoot you down. But, but Bixen said... Ah, uh, he... yeah, well, here's another thing. Apparently, there is no Bixen at CGEE. Who was it then? Governor's rounds. Prisoner, stand. Oh, don't bother with all that. I think you've earned some latitude. Your cousin's here. <laughs> 